Okay, it's Nick here. I've been experimenting more with my wood gas stoves. That's the one you saw in the last video. And I've now made this one, which is medium sized. I reckon if you're dealing with a consistent fuel, there's each stove you make has its own optimum. When I did this one with 100 grams, it burnt for 40 minutes. But it wasn't really good enough to cook with. Now, the more fuel you put in these stoves, the less air will be able to rise and feed the fire. So if I lowered this one down to 80 grams, I had a 20 minute burn, and I had enough heat to be able to actually do something useful, and then you make a nice cup of tea. All right, so more efficient use of fuel, and actually a productive usage, namely the results of being a cup of tea. Nice. This one here could do, could, could handle 100 grams. And from that, we had a 25 minute burn time. So I suppose possibly more efficient than this, and this, of course, I can find its optimum weight and or type of fuel. All right, and with that, I can make enough hot water for more than two, probably three cups of tea. All right. So we've got an 80 gram stove, we've got a 100 gram stove, and this one does about 150 to 200 grams. And with that, I've, you know, fried my dinner and uh, fried eggs and done curries and all sorts of, st of stuff on that. And that makes enough enough hot water for maybe four or more cups of tea as well. All right. Very long burn time. Now, it seems that if you overfill your stoves with wood pellets, you can get a very, very long burn time for very small flames. I tried this one with 50 grams of wood pellet fuel. It's only burned for 10 minutes. Now, if you bear in mind that when it had 100 grams in it, it burned for 40 minutes, there's a great difference in time depending upon the quantity of fuel you use. Now, I put that down to the fact that if you look at it from above, it's got a smaller footprint. So, um, the quantity of fuel you put in there will have a much more dramatic effect upon its burn time than if it was a larger stove like that one or that one. I mean, small variations in uh, fuel quantity has a lesser effect on this stove than it does on this stove here. So it's much more sensitive. So I've got to know, you know, what type of fuel it prefers. I've got to know what quantity of fuel it prefers. But I reckon I can call that probably an 80 gram stove of uh, wood pellets. Okay, that's a 100 gram stove of wood pellets, and that's like a 150 gram stove of wood pellets. Uh, if I put just 100 grams in there, it burns up very quickly. Um, I can't remember. I think that was like 15 minutes or thereabouts. But when I put 100 grams in here, we had 25 minutes. When I put 100 grams in here, it was 40 minutes. Okay. Now, I'm not going to put the 50 grams I put in this one, in this one, or this one, because it will be gone in a flash. And that's because there's much more air coming through the, in the holes in the bottom of the tin. All right. So these are things to think about when making them. But basically what I've now got is a wood gasifier stove my mush cassette. And I can take that with me on camping trips, on hiking trips, and I can, depending upon how many people make tea, I can choose the right variety of um, right size of stove. And what I can do is um, pack in my bag some quantities of fuel, which is specific to the, you know, I can have like um, 80 gram bags of fuel. I can have 100 gram bags of fuel, and I can have 150 gram bags of fuel, and I can mix and match depending upon the needs and requirements of the event based upon what I now know about the physical properties of these stoves. All right, um, it's still carbon neutral, and I've just learned an awful lot more about how they operate. So airflow is important. Got to know and understand that. We've got to understand the quantity of fuel that each one needs and the fact that the quantities of fuel affects airflow. So it can be quite sensitive. Um, the quality of fuel will also affect the burn time as well. 
and you've got to be able to um, tell, as I've mentioned before, um, flame height varies, it starts off quite low and it gradually increases over time until it reaches a peak and then it drops off and then it dies out and at the point it dies out, that's when it goes through to carbon burning. So we've learned an awful lot about how top lit, upper draft, gasifier stoves operate. Naturally none of these are fan driven, there's no um, battery powered apparatus at all. It's all naturally via by convection, anything that's blowing into it. The only thing we've got to do now, realistically, is get a much more advanced pot stand, which is more suited to the style of stoves I've got, and get a much more practical wind guard. And possibly get myself um, a saucepan or pot, which will fit vertically, and therefore maximise the quantity of power that comes through from the flames. And then basically I'm set up, so if I have a power cut so I can still eat food, which is brilliant, and if I want to go camping at any time, I can. This is Nick, kind of like signing out. I'm very proud of his new wood gas stove Mamushka doll set. Brilliant, absolutely brilliant. See if I can get this one out. I've really got to um, iron out the flashing on the tins. There we go. Mamushka!